This is Julia Witt up with Talk Story TV, and we have with us this morning Iris Barnett Barrett. Barrett, and she is going to talk to us about Mayan astrology, a very interesting subject. <laughs> and I actually had her do mine, so you guys pay attention here. <laughs> Go ahead, Iris. So I love Mayan astrology. As many people know, the Mayans are considered to be the sacred timekeepers. They have over 17 different calendars um, to honor the sacred passage of time. I got real interested in Mayan astrology when I went to Mexico. And when I was there, I had an opportunity to go on a tour to a lot of the different Mayan pyramids um, culminating in Teotihuacan. And it was really amazing because it was Jose Arguelles's last big workshop. And as many of you know, he has been an author and an advocate of honoring Mayan astrology for a lot of years. So it's a very powerful experience for me. And one of the main things that I got from spending that time with Jose and all of these amazing people from all over the world that were interested in Mayan astrology. The concept that really hit me that I think is really important to talk about, Julia, is that many years ago, and, and the ancient traditions, and still many of them still do, but the ancient traditions follow the sacred cycles, the 28-day cycle of the moon, the 28-day cycle of the divine feminine mensis, and we were in tune with the sacred cycles. That is how people lived their lives. And this is true today it's still of many indigenous cultures and of course of the Maya. And what Jose pointed out to me that I never recognized is that essentially when the patriarchy came along and things majorly changed, all of a sudden we're following a calendar that's 28 days here, 30 days there, 31 days here, and so what's happened is that we basically were taken out of sacred time into contrived time, and then people began following a sky god instead of honoring the earth and the divine feminine with the divine masculine as well, but the divine, divine feminine was very inclusive. We mm -hmm. lived on the earth. The earth is our mother, supports us, nurtures us, etc. cetera. Um, so many people believe that one of the reasons that our world is in such chaos is because we are following a sense of contrived time. We are no... Well, you know, I've often wondered why they did that. Some months, then they have February that's 28 and right. 30 and 31. There, there seems like there could have been a better way. Well, absolutely. And essentially, it was a contrived way of separating people from what you and I might consider the natural religions or the natural sense of spirituality and turn it into a religion where you had a middleman and a sky god. And boy, that has really left an impact on me. So what you find is that to this day, many people um, follow the natural sacred cycles and they follow the Mayan calendar. Every day has a specific type and it has a specific tone. So essentially there are 260 different types in Mayan astrology. So you are one of 260 different individual galactic signatures, as they're called, as am I, as is everyone else. And so it really is a fairly individuated science and you can follow those every day and look at the key words and the key energies of each day. And when I took the time to do that, and I was pretty dedicated for a while, I really felt that sense of being connected with the natural cycles and the sacred energies. Is um, there any place we can go to find that information, to follow um, it? There used to be some really good sites until 2012 was over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can, you can search Mayan astrology. Um, one of the things that I do is I offer it as party and event entertainment because I wrote my own visionary interpretations. So when I was down there in Mexico, I interviewed 
a lot of Mayans and obviously spend a lot of time learning from Jose Arguez. And previously to that, I had been teaching a class in Sun Valley, Idaho on conscious and empowering language. I think it's very important to realize that our thoughts and our language essentially help to create our reality. And so being conscious with our language is important. So like one example of bad language is, oh, I was just killing time. <laughs> I know. Wow, your time is your life. That's not too cool. You know, or people say, you know, before I forget, instead of saying, well, I'm remembering, you know, so there are ways to use language consciously. So I taught this great course in the empowering and conscious use of language. And I thought, oh, I should take all of this information that I have gathered with Mayan astrology and write it from the standpoint of using empowering language. Mm -hmm. and so it was really fun for the people in my empowering language course. And then I found that the Mayan astrology really is more of a soul path reading and that people started really loving the way I had put together my own interpretations, integrating conscious and empowering language. So that's sort of how my work with the Mayan soul path readings became so popular. Okay, that's interesting. I, yeah, I had another friend who was really into that empowering language. She would not use the word no, she'd use zero instead. I zero want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I um, I think it's important to look at how we use language, and a lot of us get very lazy with it. And so some of the beginning sentences, if you will, that for empowering language real quickly that I use in my Mayan astrology, I call them honorgrams because they're written in an empowering, honoring style. There are things like I am, I have, I can, I will. I create, I enjoy, I thrive, I know, I celebrate, I trust. So, you know, when you're really coming from those kinds of places and then you can add your values to that, yeah. um, it's, it's really um, a very empowering way to claim what you consciously choose. Not just think about it, but to really claim it with your language. Yes, okay. Huh. That's an interest. That's a whole nother subject, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, let's not get off on that. But I know you have something to tip more to tell us about Mayan astrology. You know, my husband and I, we've owned a home in Ecuador for about 12 years now. And I spend a lot of time there um, connecting with a lot of the shamanas or the, the female shamans there. And I was very surprised at how similar the Aztec and the Mayan really are and how interested the people from Ecuador who basically have had the Aztec in their history, how fascinated they were with the Mayan and how all of them had a real strong, powerful connection with mm -hmm. earth, with the sacred cycles and with um, the intentions for healing and bringing that into the natural you know, the natural world into the healing process. Um, yeah, Mayan astrology is fascinating to me. And I get a lot of wonderful feedback when people get these Mayan astrology onograms. I do them on Simbi, as you know, which is a trade site. Uh -huh. And I do them for party and event entertainment. And um, so there's the the 20 basic types, and then there's something called the 12 tones. And the 12 tones also have specific keywords. Also with Mayan Astrology, we have what we call portal activation days. And there are special days throughout the Mayan calendar. So some people are born on an activation day, and that's kind of a special thing. It's sort of like having a, a strong opening portal connection to cosmic consciousness is how many people see it. Uh, we also, besides having our main tribe, like I'm a red skywalker, for example, so I'm sort of connected with all of the red tribes, but we also have a guiding tribe, a challenging tribe, and a hidden tribe. So it's really fascinating to study it a little bit deeper than just your standard Mayan astrology. It's oh. fun to look at who in your life is one of your challenging tribe members. Your hidden tribe are more the gifts that you come in with that are hidden that are yet to be discovered. 
um, your guiding tribe and your complementary tribe are also there. So, um, you know, it's it, again, it's sort of like cycles within cycles and connections within connections. And I love the whole, you know, circular energy of how Mayan astrology presents itself. Yeah. So do you do, um, when you do these for people, I know you did mine, but we didn't actually discuss it. Do you discuss it with people too so that they understand it? I do sometimes, and I really like doing it in person because I like reading it to you slowly and allowing you to just close your eyes and take it in. And, and a lot of people like receiving it that way. I encourage people to read them slowly. Okay. To save them and to contemplate them because... They are to be contemplated. But, you know, people nowadays read through everything so quickly that they don't always absorb the depth of what it has to say. Right, especially if it's dense. Yes, and it's, it's really wonderful stuff. It's connected, of course, with, you know, the four directions and, you know, one of 260 different types. That's pretty special. I know uh -huh. at Jose's gathering in Mexico, there were probably about 300 people there and within the first day there was one other resonant skywalker my exact same type and i found her within the first day and that was kind of special <laughs> and did you immediately relate to one another you know we just did i mean it was wonderful we had a very very nice connection and um more and more people are saying you know i don't want to live by false contrived time i understand we have a lot of chaos I understand that we have to deal with the Gregorian calendar. You and I have a date. We have a plan. We follow that in everyday life. But being in tune with the sacred cycles really has a tendency to ground people and, and put them back in touch with something much more indigenous, much more ancient, much more important, I think, and relevant for our times. Yeah, and so they've got the whole world working on this calendar now, huh? Well, you know, they have for a long time. Jose really advocated the 28-day the, the or, or the moon calendar, the sacred moon calendar, and he had calendars that he made and sold for a long time. And um, I don't know, there's just so much distraction. There's so many different things to look at and study. Mm -hmm. And I think Jose just... He holds it within his heart and within himself, but I think he got kind of burned out on trying to lead this charge in this crazy world we have. Um, but yeah. um, the sacred cycles is important, as you and I both know. Well, yeah, and I think it all, it that probably has a lot to do with the, they've repressed women so much. Absolutely. It's repressed women and the feminine. Absolutely. And if you don't have respect for women and children, then what? <laughs> yes. And, and again, we used to honor the divine feminine. We honored our elders, which we don't do in the same way societally anymore. We honored women as the creative extension and giver of life. We honor children um, so much more. And now we follow, you know, a male sky god. A lot of people do. And they've really separated us from our indigenous or pagan connection to the earth to each other. Um, we don't honor women or children or the elders in the way that I personally believe that we should. And many indigenous cultures are very different that way. And the wars, they use women and children as, uh, well, <laughs> in all kinds of ways, but all of them bad. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. I think that, um, there are a lot of people, though, who are waking up to the fact that we are so out of balance and that some of these basic things are honored in other places in the world and need to be honored as well. Yes, I would like to see some drastic changes. <laughs> I've actually been upset about the calendar for a long time. I didn't know why, though, why it was bothering me so much. Well, yeah, when he really talked about how he really believes that the chaos, the foundation, the very foundation of the chaos, and when everything switched so much in our society was really when they started with the Gregorian calendar, chopped it up, said, this is, you know, this is the march of time. 
And with that, like you said, came the disrespect for Mother Nature, for the sacred feminine moon cycle, and, you know, let's follow a sky god and have a middleman. So, so I got issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And rightly so. And we know. I mean, like, from, from an early age, women know the 28-day cycle is the way it works. Well, and too, I think that when people followed the 28-day cycle, Julia, I think women were more connected as sisters. We raised our children together. We honored each other. We didn't do this competitive, stupid stuff that goes on now about, oh, who's dressed the prettiest and, you know, all that crazy stuff. And I think that, you know, you know, in, in my heart of hearts, I'm hopeful that women will reawaken to the divine sisterhood of our natural cycles together. It's like when women move in together, the cycles eventually sink. I mean, that to me says something, don't you think? <laughs> yes, and I always thought it sounded really nice that the tribes that had the women go live in a separate place during their menstrual cycle because that's where they probably bonded with the other women. I totally agree, and that was like their sacred time out. Yes. It was their time to honor the divine feminine and the sisterhood and all of those things. And, you know, now we just try to cope in a male world a lot. And we just try to act like it doesn't even happen. Yeah, even if we feel like we're giving birth once a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no matter how bad it is. And if somebody says they have really bad cramps, everybody just goes, oh. <laughs> yeah, go take a pill. You know? Yeah. And a lot of times it, it is, I'm sure, related to that need for solitude and peace and quiet and connection. And I mean, I, I can only imagine, I'm sure you can too, you know, how many amazing intuitive spiritual things opened up for women. Yeah. Times when they actually look forward to having a time out and a time really where they can enjoy the sisterhood. Yes. Oh, it, I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm. That would be wonderful. Yes. <laughs> we have to totally redo this world. Well, maybe not totally, but. I also um, have a couple of people who have expressed interest over the years in um, taking my interpretations, which again, I've, I've written them all. The work's been done. And they're actually using them for party entertainment in different areas. And it's oh. really fun because more and more with party entertainment. I mean, I'm a palmistry expert as well, which I think you know. And so I've done party entertainment for rich and famous and different groups for a long, long time. And the Mayan astrology is pretty deep stuff. And um, pretty much anybody who can do simple math and reads really well can offer it as party entertainment in their area. And I offer it especially to single mothers or older women very inexpensively to empower their lives with a way to make a living that I think is fun and meaningful. And I just have to say that that has really brought me incredible joy. <laughs> oh, I think, oh, sorry, that's my driveway alarm. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't me. <laughs> I like to know when somebody's coming in my driveway. I can appreciate that. So I live way out in the a rural area. Yeah. And, uh, I don't have very many people come in my driveway and I like to know what's going on. So, okay, what else are we, can you tell us how to get a hold of you besides the Shamanic Art Studio website? Yes, um, my email is mentor at anonymousexpressions.com. A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S expressions.com. I, um, I have um, some great eBooks and different things up there. And one thing I want to mention real quick, quickly, Julia, that's related for me is that through my study of Mayan astrology, which I'll tell you, writing those visionary interpretations really shifted something with me. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, um, when I did those interpretations and studied the Mayan and also the indigenous Ecuadorian, I got really in touch with how important celebration and ceremony is. Yes, that's been 
That's my biggest thing. I know it really is, and I honor you deeply for that. <laughs> Thank you. I, it is so very important, and that's why I wrote that book. And even though it's called Children's Celebrations and Ceremonies, it's a free ebook that's on my site, anonymousexpressions.com. Um, I wrote this great book because I think it's really important for people to realize it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be so simple, but we need to build community. We need to build family. And whether we're honoring the sacred cycles with the full moon or the new moon, whether we're honoring a, an achievement of one of the children or one of the parents in the family, there are so many simple ways that we can honor each other and celebrate each other and take a moment for a little bit of quiet ceremony. You know, so many times um, with the different events that I work or go to, I'm always waiting for the quiet, sacred moment and it never shows up. Everybody's drinking, eating, talking, and I just feel like there's so much that's missed. Yes. That they don't take that moment of silence to honor the person or, or something. So anyway, um, I did want to just mention that that ebook is free on my website, and I'm very, very pleased to share it with people. It's just a simple, it's got a lot of good resources in it, a lot of good links, and it's a simple way for people to embrace that. And I have a link to that on my website as well. I was impressed with that book. Oh, thank you. That's right. Thank you for that. And um, the, uh, Tell us about the anonymous expressions. That's kind of cool, too. <laughs> oh, it's my passion, my dear. It's my passion. I love it. <laughs> well, one of them. But my main passion really is, I, is honoring people anonymously. And it's a way to actually demonstrate unconditional love. You know, we all know unconditional love is important. We know that's where we're headed. But how do we demonstrate it? How do we make it easy to do? So I have all these fabulous awards, lifelong learning awards, lovable laughter, kindness awards, glorious gratitude awards, elegant enchantress awards. I have all these great fun awards that I have written and thoroughly enjoyed and I send them anonymously to people. And there's something really powerful about getting an anonymous award in the mail when you don't know who sent it. Everyone you look at, you have to wonder, oh, was that Julia? Was that my neighbor? Was that my <laughs> It really does shift people's perception and children are learning to look for who's got lovable laughter and who's kind and who's grateful. So it's teaching children to look for values, intrinsic values, rather than being so caught up in the material world. Um, and do those get sent to them in the mail? They do. They come oh, out beautifully with their name on them, beautiful, colorful awards, some information about sending things anonymously. And, and they can be sent with a gift card too. But I think learning to give unconditionally as a surprise is really very important. And um, it brings me incredible joy. People who call me the most crying are the ones who get the Honorary Caregiver of Light Award. I send a lot of those um, on my own dime because I think it's very important to honor caregivers and children. And then I have a Sassy Awards <laughs> line where you can send somebody something that's really annoying. So I have like mindless moocher awards, <laughs> on artistry awards, morbid martyrdom awards, you know, passionate pack rat awards, <laughs> really just some funny ones. And sometimes the truth is more easily absorbed when presented in a funny, humorous award. Uh -huh. funny way to kind of help wake people up and give them the message. And, um, and it makes you feel good to send it. There's something about telling the truth unconditionally that helps you let go. Yeah. Here's, here's your sign. Here's your message. Here's your award. And then you yeah. can let go. <laughs> and uh, so that's a ton of fun. And then the other thing I do quickly is I have honesty letters, which I send anonymously, which are for more serious challenging, destructive behavior. So, for example, I have um, a poem about gossip that just nails it. I have one about verbal abuse. I have some about prejudice, both against gay people and against ethnicities. Great. And I feel really strongly about that. And people send those anonymously to help wake people up to their destructive behaviors. And um, 
I don't know how much time we've got, but I'll tell you a real quick story if we have a minute. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so I got a call um, about two weeks ago from a lady who said, I'm calling from Texas. I had you send your powerful poem. Again, a poem's a great universal voice. doesn't sound like you. It, it, it feels more anonymous. It's a universal voice, not a personal voice. And that's the thing, too. You get outside of yourself, girlfriend, and you have yeah. a universal voice. It's about the voice of truth and justice, not about me. Yeah, It's anonymous. I remove myself from the equation. So she said, I had you send your poem, that powerful poem I love about verbal abuse to my brother-in-law. And um, I want to tell you what happened. I said, yes. And she said, first he got it according to my sister. And he was mad, pissed off and, you know, rah, 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 that stupid thing is this. Well, the next day he said to her, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if perhaps one of the children might have spoken to one of the counselors at school. And I'm wondering if maybe the school sent this to me. Oh, and she my. said, you know, that's a good possibility. And she said, that old boy found discipline he never knew he had. He started treating everybody better, started treating them with, you know, respect and kindness in public and started loving himself, obviously more or liking himself because he was being um, more civil to everyone. And these things actually do happen when you know that someone is looking, that someone is watching and there's nobody to throw under the bus. Yeah. It's powerful. There's something about the mystery, whether that's of the surprise of oh, someone is honoring something wonderful about me, like my glorious gratitude, or somebody is calling me on my prejudice or my verbal abuse or my gossip mongering. Um, so it's, it's very powerful. And I feel like over time I've developed the voice of the, the gracious anonymous appreciator as well as the courageous anonymous warrior. You know, and I am not afraid to confront things. And I think that when people can confront things, they can let it go. They can let go of the worry. I mean, the amount of time that people spend, you know, being upset about certain yeah. things with family members and just send a letter and forget it. Exactly. It's like, here's your message. And, you know, there's something about stepping up. And this woman was like crying on the phone. She's like, this was so powerful. I have been worried about my sister and those children and I didn't know what to do. And she said, it's amazing what's happened. And she kept honoring me. And I said, but darling, you're the one who chose to step up and tell the truth. And, you know, and I really talked with her and she finally really got it that what she had done was so honorable and so important. And look at the beautiful results. It wasn't about me. It was about primarily about her stepping forward. And, she just cried and said, I'm so grateful I did that. You know, and it was very empowering for me. And I said, good. And um, since then, she sent one more. <laughs> just oh, so I'm already planning who <laughs> I'm planning to send one to. <laughs> no, it is important. And, um, you know, I have a poem, too, that I wrote that's called Forbidden Gay Love. And it just really tells about the pain and agony from the perspective of the gay person who was not accepted. And that's also very, very popular and very powerful. And it helps wake people up. And when they don't know who sent it, it's just a whole different ball game. I, it's hard to explain, but there's, there's great power in the mystery. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. That's part of why ceremonies are so powerful. Absolutely. And just you know, having it in writing so they can sit with it, whether that's something joyous and wonderful or something challenging someone needs to look and at. And having it, well, it's going to come be mailed from, if they look at the postmark. It comes from call, anonymous expressions. Yeah. yeah, it comes from my business. It comes from my P.O. box. And I send these things all over the place, primarily nationally. And so, and there's with some information that, you know, the following has been sent to anonymously from some person or group, you know, and it talks about how the, that it's, it's about the message that's important. It's not about the messenger and the messenger has chosen to remain anonymous. So, you know, people really get to sit with that and it's, um, it's pretty powerful and it's pretty fun. I, I first, the first anonymous sassy thing that I ever sent was I was surprised at the my girlfriend's gossip mongering in high school. I just was sick of it. And it was so ridiculous, so mindless, so destructive. And 
found this great poem about gossip, mailed it out to each and every one of them. Nobody ever mentioned getting it. And <laughs> I mean, I was shocked to see the behavioral changes in my girlfriends. Wow. We talked about other things. Amazingly enough, we found other things to talk about. They were there all the time. <laughs> but they just had to, you know, take a minute and really look at it. How destructive and mindless and stupid it was. And that somebody said, stop it out. This is not okay. And um, I really saw the power of it at that, at that young age. And I oh, and much more powerful that it was anonymous. Absolutely. I mean, I used to preach to people. I'm a lifelong learner. I'm pretty smart. And I, I realized it just made everybody deaf and dumb and stupid. <laughs> they didn't want to hear me, <laughs> you know, but there's something about the message without the messenger. That's and a letter. So many people don't get letters anymore. And awards in the mail to get a great big, they come in these great big envelopes because I put an award in there. They get these yes. big impressive envelopes in the mail and then, oh my gosh, somebody has sent them an award of honor. And the caregivers, especially, you know how hard caregiving can be. Yeah. They call me crying on the phone. I don't know who sent this, but it means the world to me. And it's just, it just really brings me a lot of joy and really deepens my heart and soul to be able to facilitate um, honoring other people. I love it. That's one of your most powerful things that you do, I think. Well, thank you. And again, I think unconditional love is where we're all headed. And it's a simple way to demonstrate it. We can think about it. We can talk about it. But to demonstrate it, to give something unconditionally. And I don't care if, if people send my awards or not. You can find a beautiful poem about someone and send it to them. I mean, there are a lot of different ways to give anonymously. I just make it easy and simple for people. And I love my awards because of course I wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are very honoring. Honoring is my thing. It just is. It's what really has made my life so incredibly powerful. And that's why I even call the Mayan astrology readings Mayan honorograms because they're written in a very empowering honoring style. I love it. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank you, Julia. What a pleasure. And when I get over there to Grand Junction, we will get together. I look very forward to that. Oh, do you come to Grand Junction? Well, I will in the spring. Okay. I great. absolutely will. Okay. Well, this I'm going to, um, this is the end of the show now. Thanks for being on our show and thanks for joining our website. And anybody can find your profile there at shamanicarts.studio and also get a hold of you at anonymousexpressions.com. I thank you so much, Julie, and I honor you for all you are and all you do. Thank you.